I'm trying to see if it's coming up on Facebook. Yeah. Well, everybody, welcome to uh, live today, Thursday, um, back in Seattle. So it's uh, it's good to talk to you all from Seattle. It was wonderful uh, traveling. Um, Catherine and I were in Italy. And, uh, we met most of our 20 of the brand ambassadors in Italy, which was fantastic. Um, then we went on to, um, we went to Greece, which was fantastic. I uh, met with George Politis. We met with Stella Canfield and Terry, uh, which, was, which was wonderful. And then we exited through Turkey and Turkey was absolutely fantastic. Um, at least I know now what it feels like for most of you in Europe who are up in the middle of the night. Thank you so very much. That's, that's, that's actually quite difficult to do. So thank you. Thank you all very much. I think Anna's giving you applause there as well. Um, it's fantastic to be back. I'm in isolation for um, 10 days uh, before I go back to work. So I don't have anything with me to show the mixes, but um, Anna does, Gabriel does, Johnny does, Giovanni and um, Angela. So any mixes you want to see, we'll be looking at Odd Rise color today. Odd is a brand ambassador from Norway and she'll be with us tomorrow. Um, so we could do any of the mixes that you'd like from her colors. I'm going to ask uh, Anna to go ahead and uh, say what the colors are, so you have you know what the colors are. And some of some of uh, I think some will be using sticks, some will be using um, tubes, so you get a wide mix. And then if you have any questions, please um, just ask your questions if you're on Zoom. I'm still trying to find you on um, on Facebook, and for whatever reason. That has not come up for me yet, but I'm going to search for it. So welcome everybody on Facebook. Um, as your comments are, are you make comments, uh, we'll also bring those um, and, and answer those as well. So it's great seeing all of you again. Um, I, am, I am suffering from jet lag. Um, it's very, it's very uh, interesting to be out with uh, many of the brand ambassadors and our distributors who um, eat way into you know, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock in the morning. And uh, normally I'm up by four o'clock. Um, that just, it's, it's an unbelievable transition, but it's wonderful and can't wait to, to do it again. So with that, thank you all for being here today. And Anna's gonna start by telling you what the colors are. Thank you, Anna. Uh, you can go to the Daniel Smith Facebook page and you, John, went ahead and posted the colors. Yeah, we and did it. And we posted it again in the chat as well as in Facebook chat. Very good. So you, I'll just read through the colors. We have Bismuth Vandate Yellow, Nickel Azo Yellow, Quinacridone Gold, Quinacridone Burnt Orange, Transparent Red Oxide, Quinacridone Pink, Alizarin Crimson, Permanent Violet, Cadmium Red Hue, Phthalo Green Blue Shade, and Sap Green. Then we have Green Gold, Phthalo Blue Green Shade, Cerulean Blue. I only have the Cerulean Chromium, so Cerulean Blue. Cobalt Blue. Then we have ultramarine blue, cobalt blue teal, and very last we have shadow violet. And these are the colors we'll be going over today. Thanks. Thank you, Anna. So we also pasted it, John. We also have it um, in the chat. Like for convenience, we have all the colors listed in the chat. Fantastic. So with that, why don't we start um, mixing some colors, who would be so kind. Uh, let's just mix and then, hello, Barbara. Hello, Ian. Um, we'll just go from there. So we have, of course, um, in the frame now, you see Giovanni's swatching. Uh, we have Johnny. We also have Gabrielle, 
Um, and Angela. And a happy chicken. And I think like, just like in our usual sessions, John would welcome everyone's request for color mixing. Also in the room, John, we have George Politis. Oh, hello, George. And of course, Stella and Terry. Hi, everybody. <clears throat> Watch on the glass. So I did uh, the quinacridone burnt orange with uh, cobalt teal blue. Let me put that on spotlight, Johnny. Yeah. From the sticks. There you go. John, if you want yes. to... Um, in continue to interact in Facebook chat, you can actually just open your Facebook from another phone and just search Daniel Smith. And yeah, you'll right away see the live session and can just conveniently join the chat there. In case the syncing now um, is, is not working. <clears throat> yeah, beautiful colors, very bright colors. Mark, you're gonna paint along today? I'm not set up for it, unfortunately. Okay. I just ran up, ran in. That's like me, I'm not set up for it today either. John, we have a, a, a guest who is first, today is her first time to join um, in our session. Um, in the chat, it says from Ashley, this is in Zoom, Zoom chat. She said she's excited to join today and it's her, it's her first time. She's in her car with her family this time. <laughs> but next time, hope, hopefully I can be in my studio. Welcome, Ashley. I have a few mixes here that uh, turned out nicely. Uh, over here we have uh, a Lemson Crimson and we have Phalo Green Blue Shade. Mm -hmm. And here's the mixture right here. And then in this quadrant, we have uh, the Cobalt Teal with the Quinn uh, Burnt Orange right in here. And then I have the Quinn Gold mixed with the Phalo Blue Green shape here. That's quite nicely. And we have here the Nickel Yellow with the Ultramarine Blue over in this quadrant. It's quite lovely. 
Yeah. I'm working with the sticks and I wanted to make sure I told Giovanni what a great job. I was really appreciative of the different ways you were teaching us to access the pigment off the sticks. I find the, the, the recommendation that you have just um, using off the tip and making a little well off the tip. I have found that so helpful and useful and making it more accessible to use. So go Giovanni, thanks. Okay, thank you. You're awesome. <laughs> yeah, I like the well that he was making in the end of the stick that was, that was so unique. Stephanie, I'm gonna help read your message here. Um, this is especially for John and our brand ambassadors because they're busy swatching and couldn't, couldn't have time to read your, your message. So this is from Stephanie. She says, this is her second time and I'm so excited to learn from the masters. All her DS colors got accidentally thrown away by her daughter. Oh, that's sorry to oh, hear that. Um, but she's gonna replace them with sticks. Thank you for being here again, Stephanie. So my last day in Turkey, I walked into Art Stanislaw, which is our distributor in Turkey. And I saw Lizzie who's from uh, IWS Peru and it was, uh, it's, it's amazing how small the world really is that you see people in, in different parts of the world. Um, Don Fran Francesco Fontana just also entered the room. Oh, hello, Francesco. We have a number of BAs with us today. Hmm. And a few more first time to be here. That's from Nancy. Nancy says it's her first time watching and she's so happy to find us. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> and she's going to try the sticks. Yeah, it's a huge amount of videos. So please see the videos. So, Stephanie, are you trying out colors? She is. Excuse me, can you repeat that, please? Oh, I said, are you trying out the, the, the colors today? Yeah, I don't have all the ones that you have. Um, I did find a chart for everybody online a little while ago, but I did buy the watercolor sticks instead because um, what happened was my sister passed away and I had to go to North Carolina because I'm from New Jersey and my daughter was helping me organize my basement before she moved to Texas. So all the stuff that I had with all my, I had 32 colors, I think. They were tubes and um, they accidentally got thrown away. So I knew I was gonna replace my Dylan Smith. Aww. So I, but I decided to do the sticks and I absolutely love them. I, I'm like, I am absolutely hooked on them. They're so easy and so great and have so much color. I've been playing around with all the colors. What I did was that I got two different sets of uh, primaries. So I'm, you know, trying all that out. I'm pretty new to this, but I mainly do like urban sketching and, you know, things like that. I do like, like more art and things like that. Um, I was into art growing up. My mother uh, does charcoal and pen and ink and stuff. And um, I just had to get back into something just to put my brain up for my sister passed away. And now I'm like doing it every day. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. I have another batch here uh, over in this little section. 
We have the bismuth yellow. Uh, and then we have sap green. That's right here. And then we've got Quinn pink with, <laughs> I don't really know what I was thinking, but uh, cobalt blue. And it got pretty wild right here. And then we've got this green uh, gold with shadow violet. That got pretty wild, pretty nice, tasty. And then um, I was just kidding, just having fun. And we got cadmium red medium with cerulean blue over in here. Good time. Nice, especially that second one. That's very. Right. And I have a uh, Godwin red hue with uh, bismuth here. And shadow violet with cobalt teal blue. And sub green with quinacridone pink, which creates a really nice flesh tone. Hmm. Just the green and the pink and the skin colors that they provide is amazing. Can you repeat the name of the specific colors, please, Johnny? Yes, sub green and quinacridone pink. And you can try it also with opera pink. Thank you. And Angela, how about you? I, I got a quick peek at what you were doing. Can you show yours? Angela. Hello. Um, I've been using this here is the um, alizarin crimson. Uh, and this yellow is the bismuth uh, vanadate. How do you pronounce it? Bismuth, uh, bismuth vanadate yellow. Um, and here we have the cobalt teal blue mixed with the nickel laser yellow. And here is the sap green with the cobalt blue. I was now starting with another mix with a quinacridone uh, rose, I think it's called. Yeah, quinacridone rose. And uh, I will probably mix it with um, the violet. Where is the violet? Shadow violet, yes. I will mix it with shadow violet and see what happens. I like this mix. Thank you. Very nice. Very nice. Anna, Anna John has her own mix as well. Want to share about your mix there, Anna? I'm working vertically. And once again, I'm working on this, uh, um, the base of using sandpaper for the sticks. And on the top right, I have cobalt blue teal with cerulean blue chromium uh, mixed right at the center. And then I have quinacridone burnt orange on both sides of that. Let me catch, catch the strip so it won't. Um, then at the bottom down here, I just placed that on. We have shadow violet, and we're what we're watching to see if we can separate it out, pull it, separate that further, and take advantage of that shadow violet there. Shadow violet with uh, quin burnt orange and sap green, and then here we have bismuth bandate yellow with cerulean blue chromium because that's that's the one that I had and alizarin crimson with bismuth band-aid yellow. Thank you Anna. Thank you. Anna. Hi Ian. Uh, are you aware of a type of paper that 
um, pastel artist use, and it's it's basically very rough, so that you can get more pastel off of the uh, off of the pastel stick. I believe it's called sanded paper. I wonder whether you might um, look into that and see whether that is. Yeah, uh, that you recommended option. that recently. Uh, last time we talked about this. Thank you. Yeah. All right. I didn't know whether I had it or not. I've been working pretty hard on a commission recently, so that's where all of my extra attention has gone. Thanks. Yeah. I like that drawing just above you. That's the value study of the commission. <laughs> all right. It's nice. So Great these colors, I, it's fun to be able to work with the sticks to be able to get both the clean lines, the painterly, as well as the modeling here. Mm. <clears throat> Thank you. Thanks. I think Giovanni's done the colors for for Odd Rye. That's, that's very bright. It'll be interesting to watch her paint tomorrow. We'll help upload um, these swatches on our social media accounts. Um, so we'll just ask our brand ambassadors to help label the mixes, like Gabs, if you could later help us label your mixes. <clears throat> you bet. I have this last section. We've got transparent red oxide with cobalt blue right here. That's pretty wild. And then over here, we've got... Uh, is permanent violet uh, with ultramarine blue. And uh, it's actually a lot lighter than it's showing right now. And then we have this uh, cobalt till blue with a crimson. I don't know, it's kind of looking like someone that's uh, they're a little, little cold outside. Um, and then we got this uh, gonacridone gold with a Quinn pink right here. And that would be a really nice sunset. Yeah. Yeah, Gabriel, it, it would make a really nice uh, sunset, that bottom right one. Yeah, for sure. It's got all the right tones in it. And a beautiful flower, too. Yeah. Poppy. I have a shadow violet with Queen Agridon pink on the left. And on the right, uh, the permanent. Johnny. You're frozen, Johnny. Oh, oh is he frozen? Is it me or can I see a man waving upside down in that one? It's okay now, Johnny. You wanna, um, yeah, it's okay now. All right, <laughs> sorry. So I have a shadow violet with Queen Agridon pink and permanent violet with cobalt steel blue. Turn it round 180 degrees, Johnny. <laughs> No, not that way. I mean, clockwise. <laughs> clockwise. <laughs> like a man waving at you. No! <laughs> You're going to help us label it um, later, Johnny, right? Yeah, 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 sure, sure. And the Queen Abiton pink, it's a really nice color for watermelon, too. Look at that. And the shadow violet looks like the seeds of the watermelon. Yeah. What violet is that, Johnny? It's shadow violet with quinacridone pink. Oh, okay. Those two colors on the right really stand up against one another. Nice yeah, yeah. They, they fight. 
Did you? Yeah. Nice one. Shani, that's cobalt teal blue with what? Permanent violet. With permanent violet. Permanent violet. Oh, okay, thank you. You're welcome. That's Geo's mixing. Oh, I like that. Violet. Light in cobalt. Mm -hmm. and yeah. mm -hmm. It seems as though we have the ultramarine that may granulate, and the shadow violet and cobalt teal Giovanni is making granulate. Is that the only granulating colors that we have in this collection? It seems as though most of them are not granulating. Is my perception correct? Yeah. Might ask our guest tomorrow why that's the case. John, I have a question about my purples. What's the difference between an imperial purple and a gabrosol or violet? Can anybody answer that for me? Between the imperial purple? Yeah, I have imperial purple and a garbosol purple. I guess that's how you say it, or violet, I mean. What's, what's the other purple, Stephanie? Imperial purple and? Or carbosol. Oh, oh, carbosol. Yeah, carbosol violet. I'm sorry. I can't read my own writing. <laughs> I've got both of them, but one, have one, one, one is a lot darker than the other. A test of it. I mean, mid testing. John, we can. Are you trying to say something? We can hear you. No, I was, I was talking about, I'm having the hardest time with my computer for some weird reason. I think it was lonely. Um, now we hear you. Okay. Would you? Would you so the, the Imperial Purple, it's yeah. a combination of quinacridone red and ultramarine blue. And it's lighter than the carbazol violet. Carbazol violet, it's really deep. It's really rich as a color. And imperial purple too, okay. But carbazol, ca in my opinion, it's more deep. Okay. Gabrielle, there's a question from. Facebook for your mix. That's from Sue. What's your mix for sunset colors? Yes, that sunset was with okay. Quinn Pink and Quinn Gold right here. Okay, let me put that on spotlight. Kinecredon Pink and Kinecredon Gold. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. Great question. About Imperial Purple, I would add to what Johnny said that it is a, a very, very good color to mix with other colors. Uh, a very delicate color. It can uh, give light and warmth to shadows and still keep the transparency while uh, garbazol is really more dominant it makes an impact thank you george thank you very much thank you george Oh, so there's a mix request. There's a mix request here from Facebook. This is from Cheryl. Um, so she just ordered cobalt teal blue and kin gold and alizarin crimson and would love to see them together. 
anyone, any of our BAs here who can help us. Can you, can you repeat the colors, please? At least there, there are three. So it's cobalt teal blue, kinecridone yes. gold, and alizarin crimson. Yeah, the three, the three of them together, right? Yeah. Yeah, I can try to do that. Thank you. Thanks to you and Angela. Probably a tertiary uh, brownish color will be produced. Hmm. So Johnny, is that the imperial purple and the carbazole next to each other? Yeah, on, on the left side is the imperial and on the right is the carbazole. Wow, I definitely see the difference. Mm. Thank you. Yeah, the left side looks as though it's much more warmer. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah much more. What did he say? Is your camera working, Johnny? Uh, it's uh, my phone. Okay. Uh, let me note eight. It's uh, Xiaomi. Uh, kind of go back to what uh, Anna was talking about. I know that, uh, a little trick if you want to have some granulation with these colors is that you can work with a cold press rough paper and so here we have these nice little areas that are dropping down into the paper and what we have here is a limson crimson with some cobalt teal blue thank you gab um barbara you raised your hand you have a question um you may proceed Yeah, you're on mute. Sorry, it was um, <laughs> okay. just something going on here. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Thank right. you. Has anybody got Van Dyke Brown? Yes. How, how brown is it? really deep uh, it's oh, almost, almost flat. yeah yeah exactly right well that's good thank you i'm planning on putting a, a like a, a a gray palette together but yeah. using muted color <clears throat> and that's probably going to be me black You know, talk about your colors, your mix there, Anna. We had a request earlier to mix the Quin Gold, Cobalt, Teal Blue, and Alizarin Crimson. Mm -hmm. So this is the, um, the sticks all mixed together and brought, brought in. Did you just rub the sticks on those on that color? Did you just rub the sticks on there and then add water to it? Or did you put paint, did you use your paintbrush and then on, you know, on the stick and then put it on there? See where the, the, I'm sorry, go ahead. I applied the stick first and then I used water in the center to blend it and it uh, didn't, I wanted to blend it more. So then I took my brush and brought the pigment into the center from each of the three sides, except the Quin Gold, just the Cobalt and Alizarin I brought into the center because the Quin Gold was the strongest at that moment. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, that, yeah, that's great. I like that. I'll have to get the Quin Gold next because I've got the other two colors. I, I like that combination. Here, I have uh, the three colors that uh, this person requested. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you can see them in the camera. Yes. It's on spotlight yeah. now, Angela. Yeah, thank you. Wow. This is the, the mixing uh, of the three just in contact with each other, but not uh, totally mixed. Whereas on the right, I mix them all. 
So mm -hmm. as George said, it, it is a light brown. Yeah. In, in, the, in the other one, here there is uh, the alizarin crimson is in the middle, mixed with the quinacridone gold color and cobalt teal underneath. And it granulates a little bit. If you can see, it granulates a little bit. Yeah. Well, on the left, I, I had the shadow violet with queen gold. Now it's getting the color from the other mix. <laughs> The Perfect. shadow violet granulates a lot. Yeah. Very granulating color. Here we can see it better, mixed with the cobalt teal blue and the quinacridone red. Thank you. Thank you. Nice. Yeah. There's a question for all. Uh, this is from Facebook from Sally. Are you all painting wet into dry? That is wet. Yes. I paint uh, wet to wet. What do you mean wet into dry? On dry pa pa paper, I mean, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I think most of you painted wet on wet. I do a combination. Yeah, with the swatches. What combination, yeah. Some of them I lay the water down first. Some of them I don't. Yeah, me too. Most of them I do, but some of them I don't. Angela, I love how highly saturated and loose your your swatches are. And then to see in 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 live in real time the colors merging and mixing on, on the palette. That's really beautiful to see. Thank you so much. You're very kind. I find this uh, one here pretty fancy. Uh, it's just fascinating to me. It's the first cobalt blue, then added a limson crimson. And then at one top, I just did a little slight uh, swipe of Quinn gold. And it almost looks like a faded out tie dyed shirt. You know, Beautiful. when you have that tie dye shirt, it's time to give up on. And make a new one. Yeah, that looks like it, it would make a very beautiful living grays. Over here we have cad red medium with shadow violet. It's pretty wild. I like that. And then we have a uh, Quinn pink. This time instead of Quinn gold, uh, I did the Quinn burnt orange. So it's a little bit different than uh, the sunset one. Are you willing to bring the cadmium red and shadow violet one close to the camera so we can and hold it still so that we can see the striations on it, please? Thanks. Yeah, that's awesome. Wow. Yeah, that's nice. Mm. Yeah, very nice. What would you use this for, Johnny? Uh, I, I have no idea, but I like it. <laughs> May, maybe hair, maybe background, and maybe some clothing. Yeah. Nice. I'm painting barns as we speak. I would definitely use it for the barn. <laughs> There you go, use it for a barn. Yeah. I just want 5% of the earnings. <laughs> <laughs> There's another mixed request from Facebook. This is from Kimberly. Uh, kind of mix green gold and cobalt teal blue. Okay, I'll do that. Thank you. Get it, Angela. Uh, green gold, you said? Yes, cobalt teal blue and green and green gold. Yeah, I have it here, green gold, paper was very dry. 
Gabriel, that's transparent red iron oxide. Yes, it is. Oh, I love yeah. that color. I'm winner, winner, winner. That. It's one of my favorite colors. What do you use it for? Mm, I use it for shadows and barns. I do use it for barns because um, I do like a lot of urban sketching works, you know, in barns and stuff like that. But I use it for brick. I use it for, I mix it with, uh, mix it with ultramarine to make this like really great gray. Oh. Oh, <laughs> see? Wow, see? Oh, man. Now I'm just adding some shadow violet to it. Yeah. And mostly any blue with that is it makes really great grays and, and browns. Yeah, that's cool. I have to get that shadow gray. Let me break that. That's a beautiful mix, Geo. It's a fresh kind of green. Summer green with cobalt teal blue and, and green gold. Mm -hmm. Was that the request? Yeah, cobalt teal blue, yeah. blue and yeah. John? Yes? Uh, I had an idea. How about one day we have like a session where we've all got one particular uh, reference image and we take, I don't know, an hour or an hour and a half to paint it. I'll be way open to that. So a common image that everybody can see. The same image? Yeah, we all do the same Im image and see how, how we interpret it uh, with what colours and style. That'd be interesting. Paid a long activity? As long as we're all stranded on an island, I'm down for it. <laughs> we're already stranded on an island. I'm all right. As long as I'll go on any island as long as I've got my pink flag collection and my paints, and that'll do me for the rest of my life. Nice chair, Bonnie. What is that? Wow. This is quinacridone bars orange. Uh huh. And phthalo green blue shade. Oh, wow. thank you. Perfect. And here's another request from Facebook. This is from Christine. Uh, can we try cobalt teal blue with kinecridone pink? I have the transparent red oxide with shadow violet. That's nice. What was the second color, please? Shadow violet. Oh.
Uh, Angela, were you asking about the mix request? Yeah, the shadow violet and cobalt teal blue, right? Um, no, it's cobalt teal blue and pinacridone pink. Ah, okay, thank you. Yeah. Gabriel. Yes, sir. What you've just done there, get your fingers and scratch. Oh, you've, you've wet it now. I was going to say, just scratch into it. It'll look really nice. It's too wet now, isn't it? Just, just with your nails. Slightly, slightly dry, royal. But not book purple here today. <laughs> oh, here, here is the mix. Very beautiful. Thank you, Angela. I think Gio also doing trying to swatch it. Mm -hmm. Gab, your camera is an upside down. <laughs> yeah. It happens. <laughs> Anyone would help answer uh, Laurie's question? Um, what's the difference between pinacridone pink and opera pink? And she said she paints a lot of flowers. It's fluorescent. The opera pink is fluorescent. Anyone would help answer uh, Laurie's question? Oh. Um, what's the difference between pinacridone? John, I just had to mute the microphone first. I think it just got into Facebook now. There's an echo. Yeah. I think you just picked it up, didn't you? That answer is correct. Oh, that's making me laugh. Barbara, that was the correct answer. Okay, thank you. I find it doesn't mix that well, but I'm playing around with it. Which does it mix well? The opera pink. The quins all mix, I think, nicely. So coming from England, uh, we had a win-win situation last night. Uh, I'm still laughing now. Scotland won. Ukraine free. <laughs> what? <laughs> Uh, uh, no, that Gab, Gab, there's a question from Susan. Um, just looking at your mix, uh, lower right, the one with cerulean blue and another mixer. Yeah, so this one was opera, or sorry, this one was 
clean pink, uh, burnt, uh, clean orange, uh, and cerulean blue. And then this one was cerulean blue with uh, transparent red oxide. Uh, okay, that's the one that she, she asked. The lower right. How much, how much are you moving and activating the wet pigment in order to get the mixture of the, the living grays as well as that pop of bright blue in the center? Yeah, just letting gravity and watercolor do its work. I'm just staying out of the way. Pardon. I'm not trying to control anything. Have you got a question? Me? No. You got your answer. Sorry. <laughs> well, I had put it up, um, but then I just said it, and then Gabriel answered. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, a delayed it. Do you want to share, show something, Barbara? No, you know, I don't have my paints here, just a few. I've moved everything out to the country, but I had to come to the city for a couple of days. So I don't. Okay. I see Patrice mm -hmm. watching. Are you, are you watching along, Patrice? Oh, great. Do you want to share your mix? Show us your mix. Is it convenient? Okay, I'm gonna put you on spotlight. There. Ooh. Wow, look at that. Ooh, beautiful. Ooh. This. You're, you're on mute, Patrice. Okay, I'll put you on spot. Okay, thank you. There. <laughs> See, we're doing a lot of mixing of wet into wet, but do we ever um, look at colours uh, in their mass tone next to one another? You guys do. Was... When you're playing around with your colors and stuff, like when I get mixing colors and stuff and they're just left on the paper and I don't mean anything, what I do is that I do this. You know, I don't know if you guys can see that or not. Uh, you know what it is? I think it's because I've got a background on here. Well, can you see that a little bit? Uh, I've got to change that, I guess. I'll show you the next time. What I do is just that I, I just put all kinds of doodles and all kinds of stuff on it. And then I send it to somebody in the mail, write a note on the back and send it to them. <laughs> I cut my swatch cards to postcard size exactly for the same reason. Yeah. And everybody just like loves it. They think it's fantastic. And I tell them, well, you could do the same thing I'm doing. The best, uh, you know, the best work that we always do is when we're just playing around. When I have to do something, particularly for a reason, if I'm like trying to try a new technique or something like that. You know what I mean? Sometimes I'm too hard on myself because I, I think I'm supposed to be able to get it the first time, which I know I'm not, not, that's not practical, but still, you know. So sometimes when I just need to come in here and just start booting, I pull out all my Daniel Smith dot cards because I still got them. And I'll just get playing around with all different kinds of stuff and mixed colors. In fact, I got my grandson doing it. He's even nine years old now. He literally made up his own colors and named them like Galapagos or gray and, and bruise blue. He mixed the colors. I said, wow, that looks like that bruise I had on my leg one time. So he started naming all that kind of stuff. <laughs> you know, he's like having a great time. His Very name, clever. His name is Enzo. <laughs> Angela, can you tell us what you got there? Your mixes? Me? Yes, you. Uh, that is transparent brown oxide, this one here, and mixed with cobalt blue. And here is the same color, more intense, but mixed with um, ultramarine blue. And here there is ultramarine blue with, um, if I remember correctly, a green gold. Mm. Wow. That's gorgeous. Look at that. Giovanni, it's psychedelic nearly that. Yeah. 
Wow. Thank you, Angela. We have a, a next request from Nicole. Uh, please show pyro orange and organic vermilion. Just to show the difference between the two. Pyrrole orange and organic vermilion. I love them too. They are the two that I replaced. They're both sticks. Mm -hmm. Both sticks. I'm ready. And then there is some um, an interesting oh, thing from Ashley. From, this is from Facebook. She said she had, it's good to know how to create all colors from the primaries, but creativity does not limit does not need limits. Daniel Smith watercolors are like Pokemon. Gotta catch them all. <laughs> That's very good. I have the organic vermilion and the pyrrole orange here. So that they can be compared. There we go. Pyro orange is the one that's slightly yellower. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Ian was asking a question earlier about comparing mass tone. And I'd encourage you to go back and look at the videos that we've had in the first two plus years comparing mass tone. Uh, we, did, we did two plus years of comparing mass tone. And then you can also paint out your own swatches, and then you can use that and compare high value all the way through of, of your mass tone and see the full range of your pigment. Oh, that's yeah. a good idea. Yeah. I like that. Uh, yeah. You to compare there. Yeah. Anna, I know you'll have the answer to this. Pyrrole red versus pyrrole scarlet. I don't own both those colors yet. No, you don't. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to know which one was darker because the swatches are, um, you know, on 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 the uh, stores are very strange. Pyro scar scarlet, it's a little bit orangey. Yeah. Yeah. So ah. py so pyro red, it's like a Bluer. true red, let's say. But so it's uh, scarlet, it's orangey. Okay. One is cold and one is warm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Johnny. You're welcome. Thank you. And I mean, you Alvaro has a net question. Ladies and gentlemen. What is that, you, Johnny? Oh, viral orange, gorgeous. Organic vermilion. Red, yeah. Sometimes I use my organic vermilion as my red. Mixes on. Bonnie, yeah. You had some pigments that were on the table that we could see earlier that you had dropped a gray, a red, and one other color. Yeah, that's the one. And you got them to blossom. Can you tell us a little bit about the process you did for that, please? Oh, yes. Uh, this is the trans parent red oxide and shadow violet. They are straight from the tube. So it's really heavy on a pigment. I put water on my paper and then dropped my brush Boop. and it creates that heavy load of pigment that fights the water. Mm. And the combination of them is this beautiful brown. I've heard people talk about that, uh, books talk about that as painting dry into wet. And I've also heard books talking about that as painting by charging. Uh, mm -hmm. Can some of them, the experienced watercolorists, um, can you maybe clarify what would be the difference between painting dry into wet, which is what Johnny was absolutely doing there? versus charging or can you explain are they the same thing or are they different because i love the blossoms johnny has there and the chromatic intensity uh, 
I'm not fa familiar with charging. I don't really know what that is. So sorry. In, in my personal experience, I thought charging was putting uh, semi-wet paint on the brush into a wet environment. Okay, okay. So and you the, they are the same? <laughs> It sounds like dry and wet is what what you're doing, Johnny, where it's as dense as possible straight from the tube, mm -hmm. whereas what Ian is describing with charging, it's more diluted pigment so that it makes it. So it explodes out. Yeah, yeah, but uh, I think that you can have a similar uh, effect. Okay, so everybody. The, the way I... Thank you very much for joining us Thursday. I'm gonna ask a, a couple of the artists um, that question that you asked, Anna, and maybe we'll do that uh, next Thursday. I'll ask them to um, go over the difference since that might be interest to many people. With that, I wanna say thank you all for joining. Um, the the uh, mixes are wonderful. Gabriel, thank you. Anna, thank you. Johnny, thank you. Giovanni, thank you. And Angela. And everybody that was watching that was sharing. Patrice, thank you for yours. Ian, thank you for yours. Um, see you all next week. Actually, I'll see you tomorrow. If you join tomorrow, we'll be right See you tomorrow for sure. Yeah. 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 Colors thank today. you. Yeah. We'll see what, uh, so Abra is from Norway. Um, I'll ask her whether she wants to hear comments on the front end or the back end. Um, and so it's going to be interesting to see what she comes up with. So thank you, everybody. Good to see you all again. Yeah. Oh, Bye -bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Till tomorrow. Bye. 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 Bye.